Welcome back to our another edition of Intercept U. And we're talking with Chuck Pfeiffer, one of our regional sales managers out west. And today we're going to talk specifically about HVAC systems, heating, venting, ventilation, and then air conditioning systems in a home. Chuck, we hear this term, Intercept throws this term around, build, build tight, ventilate right. What does that mean? Yeah, uh, John, the, the structures, the SIP, uh, a SIP structure is so airtight that you have to consider uh, air movement uh, with, uh, within the house. If you're running a fireplace, you're going to have air going up the chimney and it's good. The fire is also going to need oxygen to burn. So uh, you're going to have to consider how to make up for that air within the house, given how sound the structure is airproof. Uh, in the past, I owned restaurants and uh, we had exhaust hoods that would vacate a lot of air. So you really have to have an engineer come and cal calculate what your air movement is to determine your makeup error, and it would be a mechanical makeup error. So I suggest getting obviously an HVAC professional in to do the calculations and figure out what you need in any circumstance. Does it have to be a complicated system? Uh, no, not in my experience. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't have anything complicated at all here in, in the houses I've built um, and never had any issues whatsoever. Good. Yeah. Yeah. In, in talking with, with folks, again, getting that professional involved, uh, they know the CFM and the kind of movement. It's interesting. Most of the homes that we grew up in, they exchanged the air when the wind blew. <laughs> That's true. And, and you're talking about being out there in Wyoming where it's it's windy and, and when it's 20 below zero outside in a, in a 35 below wind chill, that's not when you want to exchange the air. No. That's, that's the right time for that. But if you build it into your HVAC system, uh, now you have an efficient system uh, that is, is going to run. So speaking of efficient systems, uh, what are the, what kind of an HVAC system should we have? I mean, is there a limitation? Are we, are we stuck to one way or another in, in heating and cooling our homes? No, not at all. Uh, I don't use air conditioning here, so I can't speak to that too well. I did live in Florida for a while, so air conditioning was a must. Uh, 12 months out of the year, pretty much. Uh, but here with, I've used two different systems. Uh, well, I do have fireplaces that I use to supplement heat. But uh, in, in the first house that I constructed, I used uh, a radiant uh, uh, hydronic floor system fueled by a, a propane fueled uh, heating unit. That worked fantastic. So that was one, one system. Uh, and then now I'm using radiant uh, infrared heaters, heating panels. And they're, in my opinion, the best way to go. Uh, they cost a bit more to initially, but uh, they're well worth it. So yeah, there's, you could go any way you want. Okay, yeah, so we talk with folks that are using mini splits because of the, of the size that they can run with, because they've, the building is so efficient, they can downsize it and a mini split works well. We talk with folks that use geothermal and, mm -hmm. and, and they find the advantages of that. And a quick, you, you mentioned that you don't use air conditioning. Most of the country does. Yeah. And that, that, that aspect of it is very important, making sure you, again, you get your HVAC, your HVAC professional in, involved to downsize that system. Why is it important with air conditioning or, uh, to, to, to make sure the system's not overbuilt? It's just energy consumption, in my opinion. I, don't, I think that's the number one factor to go as small as you can. Um, could I just jump to something real quick? Because it was a funny thing that Joe, our national sales manager and I were discussing. My garage is a SIP garage with the walls and roof, et cetera. And I was telling him that, you know, it, it might be minus 30 out, but it never gets below 25 in there. And my thought was, oh, it's the two windows taking in solar. And Joe suggested, uh, based upon his experience, that it's the actual slab creating geothermal heat. So those panels are efficient enough to hold that slab, just the heat from that slab, geothermal, with even with you know our fa like five garage doors, but just a tremendous uh, example of how these things work. Yeah, very nice. So, so again, to recap, getting your professional involved, even with it, with air conditioning systems, part of the problem with them being oversized is they're extremely inefficient when they're oversized. So, building them down to the the appropriate um, tonnage for a for a SIP home is important. Uh, so, thank you. We appreciate your insight, and and Absolutely. this is the, one of those one of those subjects that we really need to involve uh, our our contractor in as well. Mm -hmm.